maybe um, give us some inside look into your preparation. Um, facing the side for a third time, um, two close games in the season, you guys ended on the losing side both times, facing a, a team a third time on the road, just things that you prepared for. Well, we really wanted to be aware of uh, Dory and Kira inside. They're such a great post tandem. That's where you have to start with uh, things on the defensive end. But the familiarity of playing each other, you know, so often through the years, especially these two, two sets of seniors, um, there aren't a lot of adjustments to make. There, there's a lot of execution to emphasize, uh, and you try to get the best out of your defensive alignment. But really, it was focused around the post play, uh, and then not letting uh, shooters have the looks that we gave last time. And I thought we did a little better job this time of not allowing as many clean looks. Yeah, yeah Kayla, let's let's go to that point right now. Um, early in the game, Dory got a couple buckets. Yeah. Messiah went up, you know, <laughs> nine to two early. She's getting, you know, maybe not not exactly free, but she's right. getting some buckets. So. How, how do you in the post, um, you and your teammates, kind of counter that? And what adjustments did you make, if any, or what was what were you doing out there to counter their post play? Um, I don't really think we made any adjustments. I just think we started to work more together and communicated more and just stuck with what, you know, coach told us and prepped us with all week or, you know, towards the end of the week. So I think that's what helped us stay balanced with uh, guarding them. So. Yeah, Tierney, your thoughts on... Just the transition play, you know, a strength of yours, as many people know, is getting out of transition and getting to the hole. Um, sometimes just putting your head down and just not getting stopped and getting there. And in the second half, you made a couple of those plays to kind of keep your team close and to get that close enough to strike. Um, just your thoughts on the on the, the transition and perimeter play. Um, I think the big thing was rebounding the ball and then outletting up the floor and finding the open people really helped. I know Bach is a great rebounder and looks up the floor a lot on transition. So I think that really helped. And then executing in the half court set when we didn't have the transition really helped in the second half. I thought we did that a lot better than we did in the first. Yeah, Coach, your thoughts on um, what was a big stretch in the second half? You go down 39-32 um, when Nichols gets the, the, the layup over in transition. Sure. You come down, is it Borgia or Borgia? Borgia. Borgia hits a three. Big shot. Um, and then Chocolos hits a three. Mm -hmm. um, kind of that stretch for you guys. What are you telling your team as you're kind of just trying to just inch back there, your message to your team? Well, we wanted to focus on just grinding every possession and not being too worried about where we were in the score. Um, just keep fighting and that, you know, in the end we would be there and have our chance. Certainly when Hannah got the breakaway for two, you know, in a game where no one has scored 40 points yet, it's a seven-point differential. That's it felt a little bigger. Um, so Liz's three was a really big shot for us, and, and you know Kylie coming back with the one-two punch next possession, I think gave us the energy on the defensive end to make the difference to finish the game. Yeah, let's talk about that um, that that big play in the final minute there, where you take the lead. Um, here you come in on the right side, you're driving, you dish it off to the left. Caitlin, you get that and one score. Um, Caitlin, just, just give us your thoughts on what it's like to finish that bucket to put your team ahead in a big moment like that. Oh, well, it was nice to obviously finish it. You know, Terry made a great pass for me to be able to, you know, be able to block off their defenders when they came over. Uh, but I missed the free throw, so it was a little bit heart-wrenching for me. But, you know, my team <laughs> made stuff behind me like they did the whole game, and it was just a good possession to have because they had to respect Tierney and me as well next play. Coach, your thoughts on, on this conference? Uh, Messiah and LBC. Someone's got to win, someone's got to lose today. Two very good teams, top 20 teams. You got Wider, who's very high in the regional rankings. Um, what do you anticipate from this conference as the NCAA bracket comes out? What is, what's the hope for LBC um, and what you think you can do in the, in the NCAAs? And you know, what do you anticipate from the conference? Well, the conference is tremendous. The competition from, from first place to last place, I mean, it's strong. And, and the teams at the top, Messiah, uh, Widener, E-Town, LVC, any one of those teams is capable of winning a championship. Um, and you can see how that thing's played out in the semifinals, really good games. Um, and I think the conference has prepared us well for the NCAAs. We're looking forward and hoping that we will receive uh, a home scenario for NCAAs, as I'm sure that Messiah is, and I think both schools are well deserving and will represent the conference well in the tournament. Widener certainly regionally ranked, outstanding team, well coached. Uh, I think they are also deserving of an at-large bid, and hopefully the NCAA, you know, sees their way to see that happen. Great. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Congratulations again. Thank you.